With regard to Asia, there has been for 50 years a, an agreement between the United States and China. It's called the One China Policy. It was established in the 1970s, firmly, explicitly, unambiguously said that China, that Taiwan is part of China, but neither side will undertake provocative actions to change this situation. It's called strategic ambiguity. It's held the peace for 50 years, which is not inconsiderable in international affairs. Yeah. China is still maintaining that position. The United States is abandoning it. The United States is now accusing China of calling for a one China policy, which in fact is true, they do. And that's the official policy of the United States for the past 50 years now being abandoned uh, with quite provocative actions and plans for further escalation. I can read you the, if you look at the official doctrine, it's, it's not secret. Uh, the United, the official doctrine is to encircle China with a ring of sentinel states, uh, US allies, uh, South Korea, Japan, Australia, Guam, arm them with uh, advanced precision weapons aimed at China, uh, provided, of course, by the United States. The United States is now escalating that by sending B-52s, that's nuclear capable B-52s with cruise missiles to permanent stationing for the first time in Guam, US military outpost, Northern Australia, uh, flying time to China. Meanwhile, the US is quite openly, publicly, calling for a commercial war to pre prevent China from develop developing. Official statement is we have to prevent China's innovation and development. Uh, mean other provocative acts are being taken, uh, advance increasing diplomatic relations, contrary to the agreement in the one China policy in the 1970s, as I mentioned. But, but let me ask you, let me ask you, I mean, if China, notwithstanding everything you've just said, if China did invade Taiwan, what would be the morally correct response of the West and in particular America? The morally correct stance is to prevent it from happening. There is no indication that China is planning to invade Taiwan. If the United States increases the escalation, they might do it. Uh, in that case, the bars are down. You can't say if you move on to war with China, we're basically all finished. But there's really no point considering a remote contingency when there are actual events taking place, like the US escalation of the confrontation with China. China's not saintly by any means, nothing like it. But if you look at the facts, it's US escalation. The US has now enlisted trying to enlist Europe in its confrontation with China by expanding NATO. US has expanded NATO to the Indo-Pacific region, turning it into an international military system under US control. Uh, all of this is going on. We can, if we like, talk about the possible contingency of a Taiwan, a China invading Taiwan, for which there is no indication that it could happen if we continue the provocation. Remember, the provocation is serious. It's both in the military dimension and in the commercial dimension. Quite openly, what I've been referring to is public policy, very open, and it is increasing the threat. You put nuclear capable. B-52s in flying distance to China with nuclear-tipped cruise missiles, that's provocation. Well, I mean, they the, would argue, uh, of course, that it's defensive, that they're actually, these are protective measures, they're not provocative measures. They would argue that China's march to 
economic imperialism and their massive expansion of their military represents an existential threat if they misuse those powers. That's what they would argue. And therefore, what yeah. they're doing is protecting Again, themselves and other countries yeah. from, from nefarious Again, behavior I, by China. I would suggest distinguishing between Western propaganda and the facts. So let's take China's military buildup. This is reported regularly by CIPRI, Swedish Peace Research Institute. You can pick it up on the internet. You will find that China's military expenditures for the past 10 years per capita military expenditures are a flat straight line. They have not increased. Of course, the uh, China has increased its uh, military as the population increases, but it's way below U.S. military expenditure. And the U.S. is far above in technological advances. So yes, and uh, China, remember, is faced with security problems at every border. The United States is faced with no security problems, but U.S. military expenditures dwarf. They're about the same as the next 10 countries altogether. It's a per capita far beyond China. So yes, uh, there is. And what, when we talk about this uh, economic imperialism, exactly what are we referring to? We're referring to investment and development programs throughout Eurasia, expanding to Africa, expanding even to Latin America. The U.S. is trying to stop them, has found no way to do it, except by escalating in the military and economic dimensions by trying openly, publicly, to try to prevent China's economic you see, development. If you don't mind me, uh, at the risk of sounding impertinent, but you sound very trusting of China and its motivations. No, not in the least. I said explicitly, China is by no means saintly. Plenty of criticisms you can make of China. But I would like to describe the world situation as it is, not as it's presented by US-British propaganda. Okay, let's move to another issue I think we have more common ground.